Did you guys know that there is one job that cats have held hundreds of thousands, maybe longer years, because they're good at it? As a matter of fact, when we use the term working cats these days, we're referring to like barn cats who control the mouse population in a barn, or bodega cats, warehouse cats, shop cats. When we refer to cats doing their job, it's always the mice and the rats who suffer because of that job. Yes, cats are hunters. I mean, is that all cats are capable of? Of course not, silly people. As a matter of fact, a cat can hold public office or a cat can, you know, pursue higher education and, and even get published. No, I'm not kidding. Oh, you don't think so? All right, well, I'm gonna bring it then. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna give you 10 examples of cats who have held some pretty remarkable jobs. All right, starting off this list, I figured let's just start because it's my hometown, because it's in New York, New York, New York, New York. It is the home of the Algonquin Hotel. They've had a lobby cat there since the 1920s. Uh, not the same cat, because that would be a thing unto itself. But back in the 1920s, John Barrymore was uh, nearby on Broadway doing a production of Hamlet. They had this cat. At that point, his name was Rusty. And John Barrymore was like, no, that will not do at all. I will name you Hamlet. And the Algonquin Quinn Lobby Cat was thereby christened. We are now up to Hamlet the Eighth at the Algonquin. If for some reason the Algonquin Lobby Cat becomes female, her name is always Matilda. Not exactly Hamlet, don't know where that came from, but if you go to the Algonquin Hotel today, you have a very good chance of meeting Hamlet the Eighth. I should go visit Hamlet. I, I, you know what? I haven't been to the Algonquin in a very long time. This is Hamlet, everybody. Hamlet is the Algonquin cat. Not the original Hamlet. There have been many Hamlets before him. Living his best life here in the lobby of the Algonquin. Are you not? Oh, he's a crest stuff on that. So, oh yeah, here we go. So this is Jason who works here at the Algonquin. And apparently you and Hamlet have this thing with your hair. <laughs> it's Hamlet the eighth. We've had um, eight Hamlets and before the Hamlets we also have three Matildas. I uh, believe by looking at his um, doctor records, he is seven. I'm not 100% sure where he's a doctor from, but uh, we work with Eastside Animal Hospital. Oh, right and on. Dr. Keith Manning is part of the um, foundation that we did get him from. Right on, buddy. We, we have guests that come to the hotel just for him. He is the king of the Algonquin. You know, three square meals a day. Don't have to pay rent in New York City. Oh, the best deal. I know, right? <laughs> Do you know what the rent is for this little house, bud? If you want to be the guy that every cat loves, then all you really got to do is be the holder of the true roof. Stubbs the cat was just living the good life in Talkeetna, Alaska, it's hanging out at Nagley's General Store, greeting people. Everyone loved Stubbs so much. They elected him mayor of Talkeetna. They hadn't even had a human mayor there, but they said, you know what? You deserve it. We always feel so welcome. Stubbs served as mayor from 1998 all the way to 2017 when he passed on. And the people of Talkeetna were like, "What? look, this worked really well for us. Let's just elect another cat. And now Denali the cat is the current mayor and everything is just humming along like a sewing machine in Talkeetna. Okay, this keeps getting better. Did you know that cats could actually write peer reviewed scientific papers? No. You just can't doubt this. So Jack Hetherington was a mathematics and physics professor at Michigan State. Jack is just finishing a very important paper and now he wants to get it published in the physical review. But all of these papers have to go through a peer review process. A friend of his says, wait a minute, you might want to pull this right now because you keep using we instead of using I. And if you do that, then there's no co-author to be found and they're going to reject the paper. And Jack goes, man, well, I might have to invent a co-author. And he looks and there's Chester. Uh -huh. One of the scientific names for cats is Felis domesticus. This was back in 75, different story. Felis domesticus Chester, F-D-C, and then what? What's his last name? Chester's father was named Willard. F.D.C. Willard. Well, that sounds scientific, doesn't it? The paper got published. It, the cat was out of the bag <laughs> when 
Hetherington <laughs> sent out copies of this uh, article to his friends and signed it and put a paw print next to it. FDC Willard, hats off. All right, I want you to imagine something. It's 1909, and you are walking through the gates of the British Museum in London. And as you pass the gates, you look down, and there's a cat. His name is Black Jack. And Black Jack chases away birds and doesn't like dogs very much. One day, Black Jack just trots up to the scholar who's in charge of Egyptian antiquities, drops this thing at the keeper's feet, and it was a little baby kitten. Of course, this is kismet. I guess, or kitten mitt, and <laughs> they named the kitten Mike, and he now becomes a member of the British Museum family. Mike was just an amazing student of Blackjack, and eventually Mike took over. Museum guard Mike held that position for 20 years, till 1929. Time magazine found out about this and wrote an article commemorating Mike, as a, as a matter of fact, saying that he was the most famous British cat of the 20th century. Mike did his job exceedingly well, although with a bit of a bias, he was an admitted misogynist, wouldn't let women feed him, wasn't all that crazy about women in general, and he was very much not into dogs. They uh, referred to him as a cynophobe, C-Y-N, cynophobe. That is afraid of dogs, go figure. They actually erected a tombstone for Mike at the gates of the British Museum. And now we go from the most famous British cat of the 20th century, according to Time Magazine, to the single most famous British cat of the 21st century, according to me and a lot of other people, and that is Larry, who is the chief mouser at 10 Downing Street, which is the home of whatever British prime minister happens to be there at the time. The title is chief mouser, and it does come with a job description. His day-to-day -day duties include contemplating a solution to the mouse occupancy of 10 Downing, of course, Larry does believe that this is still in the tactical planning stage, but his given jobs uh, include greeting guests to the house, inspecting security defenses, and testing antique furniture for napping quality. And then, of course, there is mousing. He was criticized, brought into the office for a good dressing down because he was doing a little bit too much napping. Then Prime Minister David Cameron in 2011 was found throwing a fork at a mouse during a cabinet dinner, which was... You know, it was a fork, so it was a jab at Larry. Get it, it was a, yeah. Along with the normal issues that you see, especially in politics, when you're holding a job that has a certain amount of status, someone's always gonna be nipping at your heels. Somebody wants to poke a hole in that peerless Larry quality. And in this case, that was Palmerston. Palmerston was a cat at the foreign office, you know, a couple of doors down. The cats settled it in the most diplomatic way that cats settle things, and that is with like a knockdown, drag out, screaming fight. <laughs> In 2020, Palmerston wrote a retirement letter, and when the BBC News picked it up, they said that Palmerston's decidedly undiplomatic disputes with Larry are not thought to have hastened his departure. I'm sure Larry would disagree. You might have heard about Dewey. Dewey, read more books? The small town library cat? Dewey not only had one book written about him that was a New York Times bestseller, but two children's books after that. Dewey was actually found after he was dropped in the, as a kitten into the drop box of the library in Spencer, Iowa. Dewey was then a fixture at the library for the next 19 years after he died of various health complications. But in the meantime, not only was he revered by all in Spencer, Iowa, he along with everybody else featured here, didn't just have an easy time of it. He actually had a job description. Here were his day-to-day -day responsibilities. Reduce stress for all humans who pay attention to him. Sit by the front door every morning at 9 a.m. to greet the public as they enter the library. Inspect all boxes that enter the library for security problems and comfort level. Attend all meetings in the round room as official library ambassador. Provide comic relief for staff and visitors. Climbing in book bags and briefcases while patrons are studying or trying to retrieve needed papers underneath him. Oh, there's more. Generate national and worldwide publicity for Spencer Public Library. Of course, this entails sitting still for photographs, smiling for the camera, and generally being cute. And that's hard work. Just so you're aware, 
CAD jobs don't necessarily have to be like, oh, I work at the Algonquin, or oh, I work at 10 Downing Street. No, my friends, there are cats who have truly represented the working class, and Smudge, if you had to pick one cat, Smudge is that cat. Starting in about 1979, Smudge was hired as the official mouser at the People's Palace Museum in Glasgow, Scotland. The people who run this museum, they say, no, 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 we have to walk the walk with Smudge. And they, and they applied for Smudge to be a member of a union. And she was promptly rejected in a shocking act of non-labor unity and discrimination. But she was picked up by another union, the GMB, or the General Municipal and Boilermaker Union. Smudge was the first picket line cat recorded ever, but also she became the official mascot of a couple of different municipal drives, including Save the Glasgow Vet School. She lived to be about 28 years old, going home with the museum curator for that quiet life. What a life that was. Thank you, Smudge. Not all cats who have run for public office have done so successfully. Now, in the case of Hank, the cat who ran for the Senate seat in Virginia in 2012, it wasn't because he wasn't running for a just cause. I mean, he was running on the platform of animal rescue, spay and neuter, and positive campaign reform, but the election itself was just absolutely undermined by this disgraceful ad campaign by a super PAC called Canines for a Feline Free Tomorrow. And they were not even putting a candidate forward. They just wanted the cat out of town. Check this out. Hank has never released his birth certificate, his tax returns, and has never responded to allegations that he used catnip. Should a Maine coon really be running for Senate in Virginia? We need more facts and fewer fat cats in Washington. But let it be known, Hank's candidacy was not in vain. If there's ever going to be positive campaign reform, Hank, your legacy lives on. Disgraceful. And now, a dishonorable mention in this list. Thievery is actually work. It's just not honorable work. And to that end, we have to point out Dusty, or as he became known, Dusty the Klepto Kitty. Dusty was adopted by a new loving family from the Peninsula Humane Society in California in 2006. Now, by 2008, his family was noticing that their house was filling up with all kinds of stuff. By day, he's a house pet. When the sun goes down, it's time to hit the streets. Dusty is a cat burglar. In the past three years, they figure he's stolen about 600 items. He had amassed an inventory of stolen goods that included, and I quote, 16 car wash mitts, and I mean, really, I didn't even know there were that many, seven sponges, 213 dish towels, seven washcloths, five towels, 18 shoes, 73 socks, 100 gloves, one pair of mittens, three aprons, 40 balls, 40 pairs of underwear, male and female, one dog collar, six rubber toys, one blanket, three leg warmers, two frisbees, one golf club head cover, one one safety mask, two mesh bags, one bag of water balloons, one pair of pajama pants, eight bathing suits, and eight miscellaneous objects. At that point, what the hell is miscellaneous? There's nothing left. The TV network Animal Planet recently installed a camera outside the house. It captured his nightly forays for a week. Chu says Dusty's record take for one night is pretty amazing. One night how many? Eleven. Eleven, Eleven. different things. It's getting dark now. The question is, which house will Dusty hit? Listen, Dusty, I'm sorry you had to be shamed for the whole world, but if there is any consolation, you know, maybe you were actually Robin Hood. Maybe you were actually stealing from people who didn't really need a car wash mitt and bringing it to, to the home where maybe they could disperse it to car wash goodwill. I have no idea, but anyway, that's our dishonorable mention. Now this one I'm saving for last because it's not that Tama the cat was doing a job that was above and beyond any of the other ones that we've talked about. No, no, no. It was more that Tama was so revered by her local community. So. Picture this, it's the late 90s. Tama is a little calico kitten who lives near the Kishi Station in Wakayama Prefecture. And in this station, of course, there's commuters of all kinds coming and going all day long, and the commuters just fall in love with this cat. They nickname her the Station Master. The president of the railway, Mitsunobu Kojima, a total dog person, took one look at Tama the cat and just fell for her. He ordered a customized Station Master hat for her 
and she became the official station master of Kishi Station. I mean, she did have a job description. She had to officially be part of all promotional materials for the rail line. Yes, that was true. And she did greet uh, all of the commuters a lot of times from a table they had set up by the ticket booth. Or speaking of ticket booth, she had her own. She'd be behind the glass at a converted ticket booth where her litter box and her bed were. Then in 2008, she was promoted to, and I don't even know if this was a job, but she became super station master. And she was knighted by the governor of the prefecture. Holy, it's a, I mean, really, it gets better. Tama did her job so incredibly well that the railway, I just, it's so, it's amazing to me that the railway reported a rise in commutership from the station up by 300,000 thanks to Tama, seriously. And they designed a Tama-inspired train. It's called Tamaden, and take a look at Tamaden. It is, I would assume, the first actual commuter line that had ears and whiskers. Tama, Tama the super station master knighted train named after her cat. Tama passed on at the age of 16 in 2015, but in typical Tama style, she lived on after death. Thousands attended her funeral where they left flowers and cans of tuna at the station. They erected a shrine to Tama on the platform. And in the Shinto religion, she was elevated to the status of goddess of the Wakayama Electric Railway. You cannot, and I am not, making this up. There are now other cats who are station masters at different stations along the Wakayama line, including Nitama, which stands for second Tama, Sun Tama Tama, which is third Tama, and Yon Tama, yes, that's fourth Tama. To cap it all off, for what would have been her 18th birthday, Google had a join in by having a Google Doodle for her birthday. Tama takes the cake as the most revered working cat in the history of the world. So remember I told you at the beginning of this video that at one point you'd be like, wow, Jackson, I'm sorry I ever doubted you. I'm waiting. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh. Okay, I'll take it. For hundreds of thousands of years, since the day we started storing grains in silos to just this moment, nobody has ever looked at a working cat and said, I wish you weren't here. Not one person. But not everybody can be Tama. But that said, uh, I'm sure there are other working cat stories that you've heard before that we didn't mention here. And if so, mention them down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe because, you know, everyone has to have a job. And yours can be as simple as, like, you know, clicking a button and make sure that uh, you give us that little thumbs up as well. Until next time, my friends, let's go out, do our jobs so that these cats would be proud of us. All that I love, all cat mojo to you. Meow.